Hi there, I'm Rod Carr and it's time for our first issue of Songs of Hope Vlog. And this coming Sunday, the 28th of January 2018, we're going to have our Songs of Hope radio program. And on this Vlog, we are going to feature three of the items that are going to be on that program. And the first item will be our prayer psalm. And the second item will be the news brought to us by Vic Campbell. And the third item will be the story of John Dunmore Lang. John Dunmore Lang. So let's get right into it. And firstly, our prayer psalm is Psalm 97. The Lord brings justice. And it's great to know that God protects his people and uh, protects them from violence, rescues them from violence. This is Psalm 97, read by Hugh Elphinstone. The Lord is King. Tell the earth to celebrate, and all islands to shout. Dark clouds surround him, and his throne is supported by justice and fairness. Fire leaps from his throne, destroying his enemies. And his lightning is so bright that the earth sees it and trembles. Mountains melt away like wax in the presence of the Lord of all the earth. The heavens announce, the Lord brings justice. Everyone sees God's glory. Those who brag about the useless idols they worship are terribly ashamed. And all the false gods bow down to the Lord. When the people of Zion and the towns of Judah hear that God brings justice, they will celebrate. The Lord rules the whole earth, and he is more glorious than all the false gods. Love the Lord and hate evil. God protects his loyal people and rescues them from violence. If you obey and do right, a light will show you the way and fill you with happiness. You are the Lord's people. So celebrate and praise the only God. Thank you, Hugh Elphinstone. We'll now have our Christian News Bulletin for this week. The week starting 28th of January 2018. And Vic Campbell is going to bring it to us. And we're going to hear about uh, the Syrian churches seeking help in the face of uh, attacks against them. We're going to hear about the Aboriginal people in Australia want uh, an Aboriginal training college for their ministers. And we're going to hear about a new movie about Mary Magdalene. So that's coming up, uh, scheduled for cinema release on March the 22nd. You... So Vic will bring us all those news items. Thanks, Vic. Christian News Bulletin. The Christian Post carries a report that says Christian churches in Syria are crying out for help and assistance amid deadly attacks by Turkish forces on Kurdish areas of the civil war ravaged nation. Churches in Afrin are calling on the international community not to ignore their plight as they face great danger from Turkey and its jihadist alliance, which began a military campaign in the Afrin region recently on grounds that Kurdish militias pose a security threat. Eternity magazine reports that an indigenous Christian leader says the indigenous church is at risk of losing potential future leaders if the broader Australian Christian community doesn't act soon to fill an educational gap for Aboriginal men and women who want to go into ministry. The Aboriginal Evangelical Fellowship is seeking church support for its efforts to revive the Bimbadine Aboriginal Training College at Kutamundra in New South Wales. Scheduled for cinema release on March 22, the film Mary Magdalene will tell the story of Mary's spiritual journey as she leaves her small fishing village and traditional family to follow Jesus of Nazareth. Queensland-based organisation Movies Change People are offering Hmm, interested churches and individuals in Bible study resources prior to the film's release in Australia. Now, our Christian who made a difference this week is John Dunmore Lang. And who was he? Well, he was one of the early settlers in Australia. 
He uh, was born in Scotland and became a Presbyterian clergyman there, then migrated to Australia. And uh, he um, agitated to get Australia independent of Britain. So he was the first founder of a uh, political party in Australia and he agitated for independence from Britain, and uh, which is what Scots people do, as they did in America, they did in Australia. And he also uh, arranged things so that uh, Christians other than Anglicans could come to Australia and be looked after, and he ensured that Presbyterians could worship and, uh, and uh, establish schools here in Australia. So uh, here's the story of John Dunmore Lang. Today in Christians Who Have Made a Difference, we're going to look at the life of John Dunmore Lang. John Dunmore Lang. He lived from 1799 to 1878 and was an Australian Presbyterian clergyman, writer, politician and activist. He was the first prominent advocate of an independent Australian nation. He also opened up Australia to Christian denominations other than Anglican. Lang was born near Greenock, Scotland, the eldest son of William Lang and Mary Dunmore. His father was a small landowner and, and his mother a pious Presbyterian Christian. He grew up in nearby Largs and uh, was educated at the University of Glasgow, where he excelled, winning many prizes and graduating as a Master of Arts in 1820. His brother George had found employment in New South Wales and Lang decided to join him. Arriving in Sydney Cove in 1823, he became the first Presbyterian minister in the colony of New South Wales. On the way back from the second of his nine voyages back to Britain, he married his 18-year-old cousin Wilhelmina Mackey at Cape Town. They were happily married for 47 years. The Langs had 10 children, but only three survived him, and there were no grandchildren. He agitated to have Presbyterian Christians' needs recognised in the colony and built the first church for these people in Sydney and the first school for Presbyterian children. He wanted Australia to be a Christian nation, but he was against a one Christian denomination church state. He wanted the state to support a number of Christian denominations. He gained state support for Catholic, Methodist and Presbyterian Christians. Lang was alarmed by the gross wickedness among the colonists as a result of their penal history, and so he advocated the end of transportation and encouragement of free Christian emigration to Australia. While in Scotland in December 1830, Lang was struck by Scotland's poverty. He thought this could be relieved by free citizen emigration to Australia. His plan was that good Christian migrants would produce a moral reformation in New South Wales. He was directly responsible for more than 4,000 destitute Christian Scotsmen migrating to New South Wales. They were given land and thrived in the new country and contributed to Australia's Christian morals and values. In 1843, Lang was elected to the New South Wales Legislative Council as the representative of the Port Phillip District, holding his seat until 1846. From 1850 to 1852, Lang was one of the members for Sydney. By 1850, Lang showed he was a radical Democrat and a Republican. With Henry Parks and James Wilshire, he founded the Australia League, considered by historians to be Australia's first political party. He put forward ideas which were both visionary and radical, the federation of the Australian colonies and the establishment of a fully democratic government. He did this at a time when both in Britain and Australia the vote was restricted to owners of property only. His best written work was Freedom and Independence for the Golden Lands of Australia, published in 1852. I noticed that Lang was mentioned recently in the television series Who Do You Think You Are? Geoffrey Robertson was looking into his ancestry and discovered his great-great-grandparents were destitute Scots 
who came to Australia in the 1830s, sponsored by Lang and Norman MacLeod. We covered Norman MacLeod in this series a few weeks ago. We salute John Dunmore Lang, a Christian who has made a big difference for Australia. Christians made a difference. Well, that brings us to the end of our first Songs of Hope vlog for 2018. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.